Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at the power of curves, the curves image adjustment. It's probably the most powerful feature available to you in Photoshop and it's been around forever. Um, curves is a feature that virtually all pros use when it comes time to change contrast and tone within an image. It's incredibly powerful. It's very simple once you understand how it works and you're just going to love it. You can you can play around with colors, you can play around with contrast and tone and brightness of your images. There's hardly a thing when it comes to the color and tone of your image that you can't do with a curves adjustment layer. So with that in mind, let's jump right in and take a look at curves. This by the way is the image we're going to be adjusting. This is a, the skyline of Philadelphia, uh, which is in Pennsylvania, United States. So. Here we go. I have this image. It's a photograph that I shot. I shot it right at sunset. It was about 7.20 p.m. Uh, in the middle of summer. Uh, and the, the sun is actually right behind this building right here. So the sun is just out of frame. We don't have any kind of crazy sun flare we're dealing with. But what we have is the sky is exposed nicely, but the foreground is very dark. I actually shot this as a an image that was supposed to be part of an HDR, but I decided to take it into Photoshop and play around with it and see what I could do with a couple curves adjustment layers. And sure enough, one or two curves adjustment layers and we can do a huge amount with this image. So let's take a look. We're going to go layer, new adjustment layer, curves. There are a few different ways you can access curves. This is the non-destructive way. This is the way that I think is best uh, when it comes to curves. Um, so this is what we're going to use. Layer, new adjustment layer, curves. And we can give it a name. I'm just going to say name it Curves 1. You can see there it is hanging out there on our Layers panel. And I have my Properties panel that appears. If you're using an older version of Photoshop, you may not have the Properties panel, but you will have a similar panel that appears uh, with something similar to this in it. All right, so an easy way to think about curves is you have a little dot here on the bottom left and a little dot in the top right. This dot in the top right is the brightest point in your image. Dot down here is the darkest point in your image, which you probably don't quite understand yet if you don't understand curves. Don't worry about it. Just know that they're there. The important thing is if you click on this line, you add a little point. All right. I'm going to get rid of that point. Okay. So you add a point and then you can just drag it away. All right. Add a point, drag it off. It's gone. Now, when you add a point, you can click on that point and drag it down, which darkens the image. You can see kind of a cool silhouette like shot. Not bad. I can grab that same point and I can push it up. And that is going to brighten up the image. So we lose a lot of that wonderful color and detail in the sky, but we're getting all of this detail in the foreground. I don't really like that though. It's, it's kind of washes everything out. There's none of that dramatic color. So how can we use curves to brighten one part of an image, yet not brighten another part? For instance, we want to brighten the foreground, but leave the sky as it is. We love this stuff up here. This looks great. This looks not so great. Well, if we take a look at the curves adjustment panel again, we can see that there's this histogram on the background sort of inlaid in there. This is a new feature. I believe it's new to Photoshop CS5. It might be Photoshop CS6. Um, it's fairly new. Um, I'm using Photoshop CS6 today. Um, so if you're in an older version of Photoshop, you might not have the histogram, but this, what I'm about to tell you, still stands true. Over here, if I push up here or push down here, this is in the darker portion of the image. Right, So if I add a second point here, say, hey, line, you stay straight there, and I just pull down here, you can see I'm not really darkening the sky. I'm only darkening this foreground shadowy area. And if I brighten it, I'm really brightening up the foreground. And look at that. The sky seems to be saying about the same color. Now, we've really destroyed our contrast, but it's the principle that's important here. You can add points to specific parts of this line and affect that part of the image. So down here is the dark part of the image, right? The shadows in the image. We can see we've got a lot of shadows. Our histogram is telling us that. We come up here to the foreground. We can just generally overall affect the image and sort of have it taper off toward highlights and shadows, taper our, our adjustment off. Or we can come up here and just affect the highlights. So I could just darken the sky, pull this back up to leave the, the foreground just as dark as it was. And we can see before, after. You can see the, the foreground brightens a little bit, but that's because we have this little bump in our line. We should be able to adjust that and make it right. And you can see the sky goes from brighter to just a little darker. All right, nothing huge. But the point is, using a couple little anchor points, all right, we're making sure the line stays true. Our original image is that straight line going right through curves. And we're just saying, all right, highlights up here, we just want you to be a little darker. If we take that and drag it up, we're just going to make them a little brighter. I don't like that. We're going to drag all these points off and get back to our original image. Now that we've talked about that, instead of continuing to talk and talk and talk about it, let's do something. Let's brighten up the foreground. 
So what I'm going to do, I know that out here, this is the dark portion of the image. This is this part of the histogram. So I'm going to drag up until I see something that I like. All right, that looks pretty good. We can see a bunch of detail here in the foreground. We don't want it to be too bright. Looks pretty good. However, we're losing all that amazing detail and color in the sky. So what are we going to do? We know the sky is this brighter portion. So I'm going to add another point and we're going to drag this back so it's about straight. All right, back to the original image. Okay, I'm going to collapse my properties panel real quick and I'm going to shut off the curves adjustment layer and turn it back on. You can see that the sky remains relatively the same, a little bit brighter, very little bit, loses a bunch of contrast, but our foreground is much, much brighter. So we can pretty easily go in and add more contrast. Let's actually do that. I'm going to collapse the properties panel again. Let's add another curves adjustment. So we're going to go layer, new adjustment layer, curves. Okay, you can see a second curves adjustment layer. And to add contrast, the basis of contrast is make the darks a little bit darker, make the brights a little bit brighter. So how will we do that with curves? Well, we grab right down here and say, all right, darks, you get just a little bit darker. And hey, brights up here, you get a little bit brighter. All right, so I'm going to, get, I'm going to exaggerate this for you guys. We're creating an S curve. Now, this is far too much, way too much contrast. So we're going to tone that back. Just a gentle, mild little S curve. I'm going to collapse this. We're going to look at before and after. So we bring a lot of that contrast back. And maybe we're starting to lose a little up in the sky. I don't really mind that. Um, so a couple of things I want to look at before we go on. I'm actually going to create another curves adjustment layer. And we're going to take a look at some problems you may run into. So layer, new adjustment layer, curves, and hit OK. So a few of the things that you may run into are total lack of contrast. So for instance, if I lift my shadows and I drop my highlights like this, we have these massive areas that are actually gray. Well, the reason we have them is because we have this belly in our curve, this flat line. Flat lines are the death of curves. You don't want flat lines and you don't want downhill runs. Downhill runs actually invert the color of your image. You can see, hey look, I had a spot on my sensor right there. You can see that it just completely inverts the colors. Everything looks all whacked at a just craziness. We don't like that. So to get rid of downhill runs, you just have to adjust your lines so obviously you don't have the downhill runs. However, a little trick, if you have, let's say, um, we drag this up and we get this flat line here across the top. Okay, so we just have solid white all up there. Really bad. We're losing all that detail. Grab a second point and just drag it to the closest point and just adjust. And you can see now we have a nice rounded curve. You never want those flat spots. All right, it still looks pretty bad because it's just too much light for this image, but that's one little solution. Um, and if you have a flat spot like this, it's a matter of, you know, looking for the two closest points and just Push them in opposite directions a little bit. Because check this out. If you take your image and you make the whole thing one flat line, right, just going straight across the middle, you eliminate all contrast and you have an image that's just solid 50% gray. It's the total absence of contrast. That's no good. So that's what your flat spot is doing. It's essentially taking this little chunk of your image here on the histogram, so like right in the middle of the midtones, and just destroying all the contrast that's in that one little portion of your image. Not good. So you want to avoid flat spots and avoid, uh, avoid downhill runs. I'm going to get rid of this curves adjustment layer. We're going to go back to our original curves adjustment layer right here. And we're going to take a look here. I'm actually going to boost the brightness of the foreground just a little bit more. There we go, like so. You can see before, after, before, after. Cool. We're losing a lot of color in the sky, so I might even pull this down a little bit. Just that point, we're actually making the whites just a little bit darker. And maybe even pull that down just a touch. All right, so there's before, there's after. And one of the things we're losing is that color. Can we reintroduce the color? Well, we can actually reintroduce that color right here within curves. So let's take a look at this. You can see if we click on our RGB drop down menu, we have these three channels red, green, blue. We're going to take a look at them. Actually, before we jump in and take a look at them, I just want to show you this other really cool feature. It's one of the newer features for curves. It's this little hand tool, and I'm not sure what the name of it is, um, but it's the it's this little hand with the double arrow on it. What you can do with this is, let's say you're not quite comfortable figuring out what area of your image you need to adjust in the curve. So you can hover this tool out there, and you can see there's a live little circular thing that says, hey, all right, you're way down in the shadows of the image now, or this is the brighter part of the image up here. And one of the cool things you can do, let's say we click down here, you can click, and it places a point, and then you can drag up or down, right, to make a change just like that. I don't want to make that change, though. I don't like it. 
But just bear in mind that that's something you can do. Uh, it's a really powerful feature and can be really fast if you just, you know, I want to make the sky darker. Click, boom, drag down, makes the sky, well, that just makes it crazy. But um, that's because we have these other points here on our curves uh, adjustment. And I'm not going to create a new adjustment layer to show you that right now. But it's a really, really great little feature. Um, again, not something I use all that much, but certainly if you're having some trouble getting accustomed to curves and you need a little assistance, grab this tool. It's going to save you so much time and frustration and you're absolutely going to love it. So let's go ahead and take a look at color like I started to just a moment ago. I am going to close this for a second and I'm just going to show you this slide. So we have within the channel or within the curves menu a channels drop down like I pointed out with red green and blue well the red channel well red green and blue I should say all have opposite colors see with red the opposite is cyan with green the opposite is magenta with blue the opposite is yellow so just like the regular or the RGB composite channel in your curves adjustment this RGB channel here just like that when you pull up is going to introduce brightness or when you pull down introduces darkness when you pull up on the red channel, it's going to put a bunch of red in your image. When you pull down on it, it's going to put a bunch of cyan in your image. And then the green channel, we pull up on that, we get a lot of green. We pull down on it, we get a lot of magenta. And then the same with the blue channel. Pull up, you get blue. Pull down, you get yellow. Now, why is this so awesome and so powerful and so important? Because just like the composite channel, you can introduce or remove color from specific parts of your image. Let's say I want to add more red to the shadows, or excuse me, add more cyan to the shadows, but I want to add more red to the sky. So I drag down in the shadowy areas, and I drag up here in the brighter areas. You can see, well, you're going to see a huge change because the contrast is there as well. But what I want to do here is I don't want to do anything too fancy. All we're going to do is introduce some red. We're trying to get those nice warm sunset colors. We're probably also going to introduce some magenta. So we're going to pull away from green. We're going to take some green out. Actually, let's add some magenta to the shadows as well as specifically a little bit more magenta to the highlights. And then we're going to go to the blue channel and we're going to introduce a little bit of yellow, probably just past the mid-tone. So definitely favoring our uh, highlights. There we go. And I'm actually going to take some of the yellow out of those shadows. So we maintain more of that sort of cold, magenta, purpley color down here in the foreground. I'm going to go back to the red. We need to add a little bit more red to this image. How do we want to do this? Maybe more red to the shadows. There we go. Something like that. And we can close our curves adjustment. And just like that, you can see here, we've gone from this image to this image. And it's an adjustment that should take you five minutes tops. I mean, maybe a little bit more if you're going to play around with some colors, or maybe a little bit more if you're explaining it to somebody. But other than that, it's super easy to use. So let's just quickly run over this. Well, you can see here, uh, when I open up the curves properties panel, you've got your other channels that are sort of overlaid showing you, hey, look, red channels boosted, blue and green are kind of subtracted a little bit. So in our curves adjustment, pulling up or down, you know what, I'm going to give us a fresh set of curves here. Pulling up increases brightness, pulling down darkens everything. And that actually kind of looks cool like that, but we're not going to keep that. Pulling up or down, bright, dark. You can add multiple points, all, right, all these different points to pull up or down on different parts of your image. And then you also have control of specific color channels within your image. Okay, so we can do like, you know, something that's just crazy. Really make this look, you know, like it's uh, the apocalypse or something. And you also have this really cool tool here. Um, where you can just drag up or down. And you can see this even works on the individual color channels. See, I pull down on the sky, and it's giving me this like crazy cross-processed, you know, whatever look. It's really insane. And uh, I'll actually just leave you with a quick tip uh, on using curves here. We're going to create a new curves adjustment layer. Layer, new adjustment layer, curves. Okay. And a quick little recipe. So to add sort of that retro Lomo effect to a photo, what I usually do is go right into my red channel, boost reds a little bit, go to my green channel. I'm going to fill the shadows with a little bit of magenta and I'm going to put some green in the highlights. And then I'm going to go to the blue channel. I'm going to boost the blue in the shadows and I'm going to boost the yellow in the highlights. Then I can go back to the composite RGB channel and I can even introduce a little bit more contrast. And that's sort of this retro color effect. Probably not the best example because of the other color adjustments we've already made. But if I get rid of that other stuff, you can see a little bit of kind of this retro-y, almost Instagram color effect. Uh, but yeah, so definitely something cool to try on your images. So that's it for this one. You can see we've taken an image right out of the camera like this, underexposed in the foreground, 
and we've changed the entire look and feel of the image, the brightness, the contrast, the color, everything, using two simple curves adjustment layers. And that is how you do it. So that's a, a basic overview of curves. I hope you stuck around and listened to the whole thing. I hope you picked up a thing or two and learned something. Make sure you go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. Follow me on Twitter, at Tutvid, and also check out the Tutvid Facebook page. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you around.